osteoarthritis is a chronic degenerative disorder that causes pain, stiffness, and a limited range of motion in the affected joints. Oral medication and physical therapy are usually the first-line treatments. Injection therapies are most commonly administered when those non-invasive treatments fail to bring satisfactory results. Among all the injectors being used, corticosteroid is the most common regimen, but it merely provides short-term symptom relief by opposing the risk of cartilage damage and the tissue atrophy. Administration of hyaluronic acid is another common approach to replenishing the dysfunctional synovial fluid. However, according to a recent large-scale meta-analysis published in 2015, it offers only clinically irrelevant benefit. Protherapy or regeneration injection therapy involves the injection of a small volume of solution into multiple sites of painful ligament or tendon insertions or joint spaces with the goal of reducing pain and promoting tissue repair and growth. Hypertonic dextrose is the most commonly used solution. In recent years, increasing evidence has supported the use of hypertonic dextrose for patients with osteoarthritis. However, the magnitude of benefit may be affected by the treatment protocol, evaluation intervals, and the therapeutic measurement tools. Therefore, we designed this meta-analysis to investigate the effectiveness of prolotherapy. We conducted a literature search from the earliest records to February 2016. We included single-arm perspective studies, quasi-experimental studies, and the randomized control trials. The inclusion criteria were First, studies involving adult participants with degenerative cartilage disorders, regardless of the affected sites. Second, studies involving adult participants receiving serial dextrose injections to the involved joints in at least one treatment arm of the study. And third, studies providing quantitative measurement of functional change or pain reduction before and after interventions. The main outcome was determined by the severity of pain. We calculated the effect size to assess the effectiveness of prolotherapy comparing with baseline. We also calculated the effect size to assess the effectiveness comparing with other injection therapies. Whether the effect sizes were modified by the difference in the control group or the difference in the involved joints was assessed by the subgroup analysis. Regarding the treatment arm using dextrose prolotherapy, the effect sizes compared with baseline were 0 0.65, 0 0.84, 0 0.85, and 0 0.87 after the first, second, third, and fourth or more injections. Since all the effect sizes were positive with the 95% confidence intervals not causing zero, this indicated a favorable result after dextrose prolotherapy. Compared with control injections, the overall effect of dextrose was better with a positive value of effect size. Compared with exercise, dextrose prolotherapy also had a superior effect with the positive values of effect size. Compared with local anesthesia, dextrose prolotherapy also had a superior pain reduction. While comparing with corticosteroids, although there was only an insignificant advantage of dextrose over corticosteroids, we have to know that the lack of statistical significance might be attributed to the insufficient number of studies, which is only one using corticosteroids as the reference. Finally, there was no difference in the effect sizes between knee and hand joints. 
According to our results, dextrose prolotherapy decreased pain in osteoarthritis patients. Dextrose prolotherapy provided a better therapeutic effect than exercise, local anesthetics, and probably corticosteroids. When patients were retested six months following the initial injection. <laughs>